welcome once again to the National Stadium East Field as we prepare for Monday Night Football and uh, the crowd coming in all the time hoping to be a part of the festivities here Tivoli Gardens against the Beer United on the agenda first so much to look forward to on this evening one day one goal peace and the players are getting ready to come out along with the, the match officials here and uh, again this is a a matchup that we're looking forward to Tivoli Gardens they really impressed on match week one and uh, pulled out all the stops in entertaining those who were there inside the national stadium actually and uh, blowing by waterhouse waterhouse of course since then they have improved the question is how much has the tivoli gardens tivoli gardens improved as well because those first indications looked ominous it really did and very united sturdy as ever on match week one didn't concede but has been the case in recent memory not quite the goal scoring unit but let's see if that will change but for the moment for the initial matchup that we anticipate it's going to be attack versus defense chris taylor is with me inside the commentary box do you agree with that it could be a case of attack versus defense based on what we have seen from match week one yeah they haven't really had a lot going forward and one of the instrumental players who would have expected to see in the starting lineup for Veer, which helps that process, is not there. So, big deal for them. Very solid defensively. Even though they, they lost last year's captain in terms of Fitzroy. Yeah. Fitzroy Cummings. Yeah. Yep. Very good centre back who has moved on. But, yeah, Tivoli looked excellent in the first match. The same squad to what. For, from what we've seen last season but obviously with Jerome Rayta arriving he's been able to get the best out of them so far and we'll see if that process continues so there are the two captains Javier Brown on the right Barrington Price on the left for Tivoli Gardens. Odette Hamilton is in charge of this game. Joshua Jackson and Keneal Wright will assist her. Cavill Banton is the fourth official. Last season, Tivoli only managed five wins from their 26 games. They finished in 11th place. And this year already with a win did get a win in their first three games last season they actually started the season with five points Tivoli Gardens a win and two draws but yeah a big start for Jerome Wade and this team well let's see what Jerome Wade has come up with in terms of the starting lineup Nicholas Clark is between the six uh, you wouldn't be surprised to hear that it is a back three Richard Brown Barrington Price the skipper and Odin Pennycook in the middle of the park Alton Lewis uh, on the left Anthony Thompson on the right uh, between them Nathan Thomas of course uh, the uh, Kingston College the former Kingston College uh, play, Manning Cup winner Howard Morris beside him as well and up top Kimali Smith Anthony Nelson and uh, uh, Justin Dunn yeah look out for Howard Morris um a goal for Morris, Dunn, and Jones so far in terms of their squad, Tivoli Gardens. But yeah, 3-4-3 three, three, as we are accustomed to. Great to see Nathan Thomas playing Premier League football, finally been in a lot of the squads without starting. Very United, they do have a back four in front of Roger Williams. You'll have uh, Stephen Pinnock, Alwyn Strawn, Jay Nanderson, and Kimoy Phillips in the middle of the park. Uh, Xavier Brown, Sujay Graham, and... Dylan Clark and up top the 16 year old look out for him uh, Dustin Cohen on the left on the right will be Ricardo Dennis through the middle uh, Jason uh, Dyer yeah so Cohen into the starting lineup scored nine goals in one game for Denby this season although they didn't progress and no Lamar Neal out with injury out of the squad and such a big impact player and his partnership with Javier Brown is, is such a big deal for Vera United. He's not here today, and that was one of the ways in which they suffered last season. That partnership being broken up, both suffering from injuries at different points in the season. 
And as you said, you, you would expect this Tivoli team to be a little more potent and to be the more adventurous up front. But you never know with young blood like Cohen and Dillian Clark as well. Clark was the leading goal scorer for Central when they went to the final of the Da Costa Cup in 2022. There he is, the number 27. Was well, a part of the Alda Costa team as well. Well, we're on the way here at uh, the National Stadium East Field. Very united. We're not used to seeing them outside of yellow or green, but they're in a blue and white kit uh, this evening. They'll be kicking towards uh, Uptown Kingston and towards the Blue Mountain Range. Tivoli Guns will be kicking towards the, the Caribbean Sea and downtown Kingston. And in the early stages of this one, you want to see how both of these teams will settle. Long ball forward. And uh, he's won it ahead of the defender. It's a chance here for Tiffany Gardens. A slide coming in. Got some of the ball. Play continues. Here's a shot that's, well, didn't have a lot of power behind it. Miss kick from Anthony Nelson. Former Charlie Smith player under Jerome Waite. And Anthony Nelson is work rate, as you can see there, is always excellent. But this is a part that's missing in, in his game. That final moment, that final decision. And because of that, doesn't score many goals, Anthony Nelson, but tireless worker. Scored once last season, did Nelson. Played in that 2014 team that went to the final with the likes of Bebeto McDonald and company. So there's a free kick for Veer over on the far side. Odin Samuels, who now plays for Dumble Holden, also was in that team of 2014. They have sent quite a few bodies forward, you know, Veer, trying to make something out of this. This one sent high inside the box over the head of Clark and company. Let's see what they can do here, trying to play that one out wide. Pinnock. Two of the guns will have a free kick in their own half. Alvin Strong just taking a warning from referee Hamilton. And here's Tivoli Gardens now. Done. There's a ball inside and no issues there for Roger Williams. Was a man of the match in the first game. Roger Williams against Malines United. Keeping a clean sheet and had a nice little interview after. Very encouraged about the upcoming, well, the continuance of the Premier League season. Sporting the new hairstyle as well. They make a couple important saves in that match. Ball swung across to that right hand side. Dyer drives it inside and it's spilled. Big chance for Veer. They take it. And it's a youngster, Dustin Cohen. His first this season, his third in the Jamaica Premier League. And what a season he's having. And making the step up to the Premier League. Gets another goal under his belt. Again, in the right place at the right time. And Veer, Veer with the lead over Tivoli Gardens. What a surprise, bad mistake by Nicholas Clark here. He's got to do better with his handling. But Dustin Cohen, well, he's in great goal-scoring form. We mentioned nine goals in one game against for Denby and 12 on the season. 
And look at that. Didn't need a touch apart from the one to put it into the back of the net. Peak start for Vera United. That's the first goal of their 2023 season. And it came from the youngster who wears 22. And Tivoli Gardens, how will they respond? Veer stretching that out wide. Cohen will keep it in play. Veer players rushing inside the box. What a move from Cohen. Again inside. And just evading the strike of the follow-up is over the top. But it was Clark who was running through the middle. And Tivoli Gardens at the back at sixes and sevens at the moment. Wow. What a start to this game. What a start for Veer United. Veer United. Yep. We said that this could have been, based on what we saw in, in match week one, a battle between attack versus defense. But we also mentioned when we saw the starting lineup that two youngsters in the firing line with their kind of energy and confidence and desire to do big things, that that could be something to see, and it has been. Jerome so Wade has decided to have a seat in the stands. Said he rather that perspective. Seeing it from a higher level. Yep. He has Orlando Clark running things for him on the bench, on the sidelines. I can imagine it being a new team, so he needs that perspective as well. Linville Dixon has been doing this for a while, so he will be on the sidelines. But he must be so elated inside. Because well, he's been doing it so long with the Vier United team. Yeah, with Vier United, yeah. exactly. So he knows the players really well and how they should set up. I don't think anything would surprise him, but maybe the lead, who knows. And it should have been two. Should have been, yes, you're right. Great pass it was from Cohen after getting away from Pennycook. And let me tell you, two seasons ago, Pennycook was in the top three in or top five in terms of Premier League centre backs, Adin Pennycook. Yeah, I, I would agree with you on that one. Yeah, was it himself or Brown? It might have actually have been Richard Brown that Cohen rounded. And the ball into the area was excellent. But it wasn't the finish from Dennis couldn't just couldn't match it way over the top. And the story of the Premier League career of Ricardo Dennis thus far. Yeah, we, we didn't see him match week one. Dustin Cohen. Of course he still had uh, schoolboy football to to attend to, but then they didn't progress past the first round, even though they scored some 38 goals. They moved quickly, trying to ding that one inside the area. Anthony Nelson, but couldn't get by the first defender. It's going to be a, a corner kick. And so an opportunity for Tivoli Gardens to try and capitalize on with a set piece here. Alton Lewis to deliver. Swinging this one inside, and uh, they'll get a throw to the gardens. Oh, that was well done at the back by Anderson. Cohen. First touch was a little bit disappointing there after he passed it in the middle. And the Tivoli trying to storm their way through, through Pennycook. The whistle went. Free kick to Tivoli Gardens. Yeah. 
trying to solve some issues here. Price with a chip inside and too much on it, too much for Kimali Smith. Not quite happening for Tivoli Gardens in the attacking third. Maybe now. Morris has two to aim for. They're appealing or a slight appeal for a penalty, but nothing doing there. That's a well, the challenge was okay, but the follow through had caught him. Yeah, yellow card being shown to Delane Clark, but no, he went down too easily there, Howard Morris. Well, he was holding a part of his body that I'm not sure connection was made on. Yeah, I think that's why Clark looks bemused. Would love to see that one again. This is a challenge that has come in here. Let's see where it... Yeah, okay. Yeah, there was a proper connection there. And it was right in front of referee Odette Hamilton. And it was the follow-through. He did get the ball, but the follow-through was, was pretty obvious. Clark wouldn't have felt it, of course. Free kick. Chipped inside. And Pennycook was trying to head it across, you know. But uh, only helped it out. The flag had gone up for offside, though, against Pennycook. Smith almost forced that one through. It's a physical affair so far. Strong allows it to go through to his goalkeeper who just managed to get that one away. We are unable to get out of their own half at the moment. Morris with a lovely first touch and then the pass along the wing. Too much though. It may seem as if the stadium is field under some construction because you see these uh, containers around. But apparently there was a, a bit of an event here last night, through the night. Trey Songs was here. He's an R&B singer for, for those who don't know. Uh, Chris, we're here. I missed it. Ah, okay. Sorry. Oh no, don't need to apologize to me. Here's Tivoli Gardens and Nathan Thomas. Forced to go all the way sure back sang to his captain. The, sang into the hearts of many. Oh yes, there was a, a big crowd here actually. An all white affair in fact. Mm. Glad to see that the field wasn't affected. That was my main concern actually. Because <laughs> everything was on the field. Oh, this is one is swept wide well. That was clumsy. Penalty awarded. Not a lot of complaints either. It was just a sliding challenge there. I was about to criticize the pass from Kimali Smith initially because look at this, it was scuffed to say the least. Nelson was as usual making himself a nuisance and that was a, a poor challenge, a late challenge and just not one that he needed to make. You can see contact with the, the right leg of Nelson. Why would you slide foot, yeah. in like that though? Strawn. I, 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 yeah, I think, think that was irresponsible from Strawn. 
the, the mechanics of it all, right? Because he's sliding in with his right leg, doing an almost impossible challenge because obviously his left foot would have taken and out the a, striker. And it's the left that did it. Exactly. Yeah. So the Tivoli Gardens captain is the one that has placed it on the spot, Barrington Price. We've seen this so many times before where he has converted from 12 yards. He has Roger Williams to contend with on the line here. And we know that Williams can be dramatic as well. Let's see if it phases Price. It does not. And the Tivoli Gardens, they are level. So for the setback, yes. Back in the contest now. Price converting from 12 yards, 1-1. One, one. Well taken, took a couple last season. Three goals last season for Barrington Price. It's the 12th now in his Premier League career. Barrington Price, captain and centre back. Fell out of favour for a point last season. Wasn't in the starting lineup, but definitely is the leader of this team. And that was a very composed and relaxed penalty. So Two defensive the errors. So the site, <laughs> yeah, that's how this game has started out. Tivoli Gardens now looking to continue with their momentum, and uh, that's not quite the way to do it in terms of the quality there. It was lacking from from out wide Tivelli scored 29 goals in their 26 matches last season but just 5 wins out of 26 that's something they'd want to improve this year well trying to get the ball across there and uh, from Anthony Nelson was blocked. Another corner to Tivoli Gardens. Lewis across there to take it. There's the delivery at the near post. Oh, how has he missed that? How has the captain not scored there? Should have been two in two minutes for Barrington Price. A clear head of very good in the air generally, Barrington Price. But yeah, he needed more head on that. Too much of a glance, aiming for the back post, the right decision. But yeah, needed more of the forward there. What a delivery from Alton Lewis, another former Charlie Smith player. Oh, that's lovely. It really was. And Kimali Smith turning and trying to play that one through the middle. There was an infringement outside the area. Cynical foul there by Javier, Javier Brown. Looking maybe to get away without a card. He knew what he was doing. If he allowed Nelson through there, point blank, he would have been on goal. Just look at this pass here. It was a brilliant pass. And Nelson was through. I'm telling you, he's very lucky there to get away without a card. And there was no other defender around. So, to not get a card at all, well, hmm. He must have spoke very nicely to referee Hamilton. Well, the wall is being constructed by Roger Williams. Four-man wall in there, including the captain who, according to Chris Taylor, got away with one there. So, how will this turn out? Free kick, big opportunity for Tivoli Gardens. It is Morris. 
<laughs> that was close. That was fairly close. Not a bad attempt by Howard Morris. Player to watch. I think he was comfortably wide in the end. Yet was bending, but too late. See what he was trying to. Yeah, Williams was there. Wondering if this was going to be a cat and mouse game, especially in the aftermath of Veer scoring early. But Timothy Gardens pretty much responded quickly. Williams sending it long. Veer with the majority of the possession at 52%. Morris. I think in his mind that was preconceived, but Tibbet Day win it back. Thomas inside the area was trying to send it across. United can't get up there out of their own half at the moment. Yeah, but credit to Thomas. Got inside the 18 yard area trying to deliver the cross and then sprinted back into possession, into position. To put to to add the pressure on the Veer United midfield, and in the end they turned it over. It does do very well in that defensive midfield role, Nathan Thomas. He's been doing it from a, a young start, KC. Mm -hmm. They called him what, Conte. Yeah, did lose his way for a bit. I thought went away to college, didn't work out. He came back. Thought he put on a, a bit too too much weight. Got very heavy, and was on the bench of a couple of Premier League teams. Didn't really break into the starting lineup, but obviously he's done a lot of work. He looks like he's trimmed quite a bit on the drum weight. Well, he's a taskmaster, isn't he, Jerome Waite? And nice to see him in the starting lineup of one of these teams and making a difference. If the Gardens get this right, they do have a proper spine, though. You're talking about two of the better defenders in the league, and Nathan Thomas right in front of them as the as the holding midfielder. Yeah. Was responsible for the KC victory in 2018. It was his shot that created the own goal. The way he reacted, you would think he he was credited the goal, but yeah, it was all his innovation. Oh, that's dangerous. Lewis not happy. Mm, tried to pull out, but too late. Price. Nelson. Lewis was harassed all the time. Here from Jaden Anderson. Morris out wide trying to get the ball inside. Ken Anderson with a block. He's done a stellar job so far. One of those players, newcomer in the Veer United team, was in Canada playing football. Jaden Anderson, their number five. Well, Tivoli again looking to launch another delivery inside the area. Price. I was a little bit surprised that that was allowed to bounce inside the box, but Veer managed to evade danger and here they come again this is thompson deflected inside big chance oh it's gone it is lost and uh, the card is going to be shown to nelson to nelson again the former st andrew technical striker anthony nelson Wasteful again, look at that. And these are the moments that we're talking about with Nelson. A poor challenge on Roger Williams in the end, out of frustration. That should have been a finish, a finish from Nelson. Partnered Warner Brown at the high school level with St. Andrew Technical. 
and yeah, as I said, gets in good positions, works very hard. But not sure what goes through his brain when he gets into those final moments. A little bit more composure needed from Nelson. Because really does create a lot of opportunities for himself. That's the thing. He does create the opportunities for himself and whoever his strike partner is. Did so with Warner Brown, who is on the other side of the divide now at uh, Arnick Guns. You'll see him a little bit later on when the junglers take on uh, Harborview. They move quickly though, Tivoli. He and again. Nelson inside, yeah. creating another opportunity. And Williams comes out to spit it and he was impeded. And it's a free kick to very united but yeah you're right even during those schoolboy football days with Sinatra technical he had the issues where he just didn't look to me as if he was a refined natural finisher he is Warner Brown on the other hand yeah, yeah. was yeah. and that's why they probably complimented each other because he was always supplied by Nelson and company and even though Nelson doesn't come up with a lot of assists because of his business inside the 18 yard area he, he pressures, creates havoc yeah, yeah creates havoc spills deflections miscues and then as you said the potent striker as his teammate will finish in warner brown in high school and well they're trying to find that player in this tivoli team there's warner brown actually looking on playing for arnett gardens now yep a goal already this season I'll do it a, a very fortuitous one. I don't think he knew much about it, but <laughs> it went against the, to his name. It's so good to see him back uh, in action in Jamaica as well. And hoping that he gets more opportunities to excel and to really make his mark so he can move on to become be better things. That's, that's his hope and dream, of course. But so many times he was missing at the schoolboy football level because of injuries. And I reckon that he was one of the best strikers. He just didn't have the numbers to, to really prove it to others when you're making that case. But as far as him being a natural striker at that level, I thought he was brilliant. But it's a season for a number of these youngsters to just prove their worth. Well, Coyne has given that one up, but uh, his team will get it back. Good move by Anderson. Yeah, he's impressed me so far there, number five. And, and he continues his run. Yeah, the centre back. Oh, that's a lovely touch inside. Has space to shoot. Decided to, to cut inside once more and lost it. And Tivoli Gardens should come away with it, but that was an up opportunity there for Ricardo Dennis over on the right hand side another one had a really good one in the first 10 minutes ball played inside an opportunity here oh what a finish very united they get the second goal and what do you know Tivoli Gardens again vulnerable at the back and uh, we are United and Suje Graham celebrating that one. Yeah, out of nothing. Just talking about Ricardo Dennis. Well, that was a brilliant pass. And so was the finish at an acute angle from Graham. The defensive midfielder getting forward. Just like his, his opposite defensive midfielder, Nathan Thomas. But what a finish for Graham. First of the season. And very united own, only scored 15 goals in the entire season last year. Have two in the first half of this their second match. From our angle, Chris Taylor, I thought it was in the side netting because I didn't I didn't realize I had actually gone in. I think we were both fooled. But it went between goalkeeper and the near post, and Clark would be disappointed with that again. That he was beaten there. But I think he was complaining that Graham was allowed that space inside the area to begin with yeah and there wasn't much space at all to be honest graham actually made the most of it radico wellington on the bench for tivoli did have the captain's armband for some of last season radico wellington very good from the dead ball scenarios was their leading goal scorer two seasons ago Looking to 
to bounce back. Again. Mm-hmm. That's going to be a corner. Well, very nice at all of a sudden creating chances and converting them. The pass was magnificent. It was. Him. Here's an opportunity sent inside, headed away before it could reach Price. Here is Price inside the box, and Morris trying to thread that one through a crowd of players. Not sure what Vera was thinking there with the clearance. And the whistle goes, and the kick in favor of Tiberty Gardens. Download the Sports Max app today. Get it from the Google Play or the App Store. As Tiberty Gardens coming forward. Fear United are, are just pressing and, and winning most 50 50 battles. And Dyer trying to slow things down, but didn't work out in his favor. Ron is back there. Vera United looking to hold the lead a little bit longer. Yeah, he was caught there in an offside position, Kimani Smith. Williams punts it long. Cohen. No. Morris looks so easy on the ball. Nelson can't get there. Williams had to get there. Good job by Williams, not really happy with his defense line. I think he's letting them know that. Very vocal at the back, Roger Williams. That's one of the good aspects of his game. Penny Cook. That's a nice... Well, well the field didn't do him any justice. Served him up a googly. Maybe that was a Trey Song's moment. <laughs> Maybe. Roger Williams likes doing those things. Not often he's able to do that with Veer in with the advantage. So you can imagine now. Like his spirit though. Yeah. Not the best pass in the end, but he saw his intention trying to free Cohen on the wide left. Didn't get it right. Lewis. Jaden Anderson has gone for that long walk where no ball boy was necessary, so he'll, he decided to walk about 20 meters from the playing area to get the ball. Running the clock. Not sure why they're wasting time already, Veer. Cohen. Does well to win it back, although apparently illegally. Hey, 
Lewis to deliver. And it's headed wide of the mark. I think it hit the upright as well. Barrington Price. That's a second big opportunity for him with his head. This was a harder chance. Did very well, Price. Three players around him hit the upright. This time, proper connection. Yeah, and I can't blame him much for that good attempt from the captain. The first one he got should have scored. But yeah, lovely delivery from Alton Lewis yet again. Isn't he good from the dead ball situations, whether right or left? Janice in the stands with the Tivoli Gardens flagman. Let's uh, see what's happening there. Donald, I don't know about you, but I've seen this man at almost every single Tivoli game. Tell me your name, sir. My name is Ugi. Okay. Otherwise, called Tivoli Flagman. All right. So, tell me, are you only at the matches or at your training session? At our training session, our practice match, our live game. Yeah, tell me, sir, you've been on football GPS. You're there everywhere. Everywhere. So, the only thing left for you is play football? Only thing left. So, what I'm there, sir? He's just a spectator. Uh, but you're I'm born for the football one. run in the family. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm a football, I come out of a football family. All right. Well, it's really kind of on shaky terms right now. Tell me what you think going wrong. Um, we're up on a rebuilding process over there for four or five years now. Yeah. Yeah, cause we're still up on a process. But some may say that you've been rebuilding for a while, so. It takes time. It's not going to overnight. A new coach. New coach. New vibes. Senior coach. We know uh, full in championship. All so. right, wave your flag and tell something to the Tivoli fans. Tivoli fans, we are standing up forever with Tivoli. One Tivoli garden. Well, Donald and Chris, back to you. Well, let's see if Tivoli can get back into this contest here. And they have a throw. Well, they're in the contest, aren't they? Tivoli Gardens. Let's see if they can equalize. Lewis with a throw. He's looking for movement. Found Morris and... Oh, that didn't go too far. Throw it to Tivoli. After all of that. Lewis moves quickly. Nelson. Couldn't do a lot with it. It's a literal conversation <laughs> that takes place between Audit Hamilton and Roger Williams on several occasions. Williams just making sure that he's protected at all times, despite the fact that he's instigating deliberately some, uh, some angry reactions. A few of his opponents annoyed with the fact that he's eating up a lot of time. Thomas. One of the things I've realized, Christina, is that Odin Penicook at times has come out of the heart of the defense and he has made some runs forward. It's something that we can keep a closer eye on to see how fruitful or not it is for Tivoli Gardens. Just see where he's ending up, right in front of the halfway line as this ball is touched into space. This is an opportunity for the equalizer. Brilliantly saved by Williams. Morris trying to pick it up and couldn't, and it will go the other way. Sent over to that right hand side. Cohen is now operating in that space. Brown now slows things down a bit. And the Tivoli Gardens recuperating. Oh, utilizing his speed well, and there's a flag that goes up. Kenny Cook committing the infringement on the 16-year-old. 
It was a lovely burst of speed there. They're happy with what's happening so far. Jermaine Douglas there sitting, the assistant coach, actually the head coach of Central. Cohen, youthful, speedy, and I can tell you, Penny Cook is no slouch. No, he's not. But this is a free kick for Veer. Another opportunity here. At the near post, Price was in the way, and this is dinked over the top, and too much on it. Brown looking to launch another one, headed into touch. Richard Brown isn't too happy with what's happening. Oh, that's a high boot from Pinnacle, and he goes down. Why? <laughs> I think Pinnacle realized that he was in some problems there, and let's, th let's see exactly what happened. I don't think Graham was uh, was overly innocent either. Look at that from Graham. Oh my oh, goodness! Exactly, exactly. I actually think that Graham. I think the foul should have gone the other way. Actually, Graham Studs went into the knee of Pinnacle. That's what I saw. Yeah. So yeah. I was surprised when Odell Hamilton blew the other way. Free kick, a little bit too long. Richard Brown didn't do well there. Keepers off his line, Price just making sure. It is a very physical game. Yeah, and Brown is going to be booked, and rightfully so. He's he having a real deal on this right-hand side, Brown. His coaching staff at him that when he took out that ball, did well initially, should have cleared it down the line, decided to cut back inside and then gave it away. Yeah. And then he follows it up with that reckless challenge. He was getting an earful as well from Barrington Price. Well, and that's a poor tackle. He missed the ball plenty. <laughs> I just ask Ricardo about Dennis about it. He's walking, Dennis. Good to see. Mm. His first assist of the season as well. A moment that just shows you what that number 10 from Vera United can do, Ricardo Dennis. He needs to show a lot more of it this season. Goals and creativity. Chance for Vera. Brown. Trying to sneak that one through the wall there. And uh, yeah, the, the less said about that, the better. Addison has had a, a pretty decent game. Very Just good. up to that yeah. point, he decided to take it a couple of miles over the crossbar. When he doesn't pass a half, very good. He may end up scoring a goal from a set piece or something. <laughs> Here's done. <laughs> Ball pin inside. <laughs> Haven't seen a whole lot from Dunn in this game. We've seen a lot from Cohen and company though. Ball over the top. Dennis couldn't quite shield it from Brown again. <laughs> Yeah, trying to buy the free kick here, Ricardo Dennis didn't do well. It was a brilliant pass from Dunstan Cohen to him. He's still down, but yeah, I think he's more frustrated and embarrassed than anything. Took down the ball, but I thought he did the wrong thing by going back mm -hmm. towards 
his half. He was trying to shield it, but Dunn was all over him. Or rather, Brown was all over him. I think he should have just continued the attack. Yeah. The game, though, is interestingly poised. That's not going to work out. No. Two minutes of time added on. Oh, Morris with a wonderful turn. It's a lot of touch, Howard Morris. Yeah. Game just can't really flow. A lot of ill-timed challenges. Bad tackles. A lot for Jerome Wade to think about. He's doing it from the stands. No, he hasn't been carded. I'm going to go back to the point in regards to what Pennycook is doing, and you're going to address that for me uh, in, a, in a second, Chris Taylor, but we see another infringement on the play, and Tivoli Gans will, will have a, a free kick. Yeah, they are part of a, a back three, but is it that he's been given license to go forward? And how has that worked out or not worked out for Tivoli so far? Well, because we are United, a lot of the times are using one point man up front. It allows him to get free because obviously with two defenders back, they can manage the one player. So it does allow Pennycook to venture somewhat. He's always like to get forward. And the truth is in the 3-4-3 formation that Jerome Mate has always played, he's had these overlapping center backs, if you want to call it. You think back to Charlie Smith days, he's had a, an occasion, youngsters who like to drive forward and it reverts to almost a two-man back line. And as I said, especially when there is only one forward as the opponent. Well, it's half time. And at the interval, Tivoli Gardens, they trail Veer by two goals to one. Price had gotten the equalizer after Cohen had opened the scoring and uh, then Sir Jay Graham got the go-ahead goal and Veer United are in a position of strength here at the interval and with the goal advantage over Tivoli Gardens. Football here at the National Stadium East Field. It's right after this matchup, and it's going to be Harborview and the Arnett Gardens doing battle, beginning at 7:30 p.m. Jamaica time, 8:30 in the Eastern Caribbean. The UEFA Champions League is on your home of champions. Borussia Dortmund up against Newcastle. That's tomorrow, 12:45 p.m. Jamaica time, 1:45 p.m. in the Eastern Caribbean. Man City up against Young Boys, Tuesday 3 p.m., 4 p.m. ECT. We can watch that on Sportsmax 2. Very United, they're leading Timothy Gardens by two goals to one here. And uh, scoreline 
is probably a little bit surprising for those here at the National Stadium East Field, as well as those in the commentary box. But uh, Tivoli Gardens, they've, they've looked a little bit vulnerable at the back. That has been the situation so far. While well, United, they've created quite a few chances, more than what we've seen from them in past matches. And not only that, they've been able to convert on a couple of occasions. And they could have had more in the first half, let's be frank. But uh, Tivoli Gardens, they have done so well in terms of creating chances of their own, but again, just a little bit vulnerable at the back. They started off the season pretty well with uh, a win over Waterhouse at the National Stadium. And uh, now they have to, to get their act together. And uh, come back into this contest for, for the second half. What does Tivoli Gardens have to do in the second half, Chris Taylor, quickly? Convert their chances. I think they, when you look at the statistics, they had created majority of the opportunities, got a lot of players forward. I think that needs to continue. But make more use of their 18-yard attacking area. They also have to obviously protect the wide areas of their defense, playing with that three-man back line. They have had some joy coming in from those wide in those wide pockets. So the midfielders certainly need to get back to a the three-man back line. That was important. Tip of the gardens. Of course, they'll be kicking towards the Blue Mountain range. They have a, a free kick now. Morris and Lewis behind it. And Lewis has wasted that one. Proper wasted it. I wonder if they're going to be a little bit more defensive-minded and try to hold on to this advantage, Vera, or will they be as adventurous as they were in the first half? <laughs> Williams sends it out wide, but won't reach a teammate. Cook. Done. Oh, that was a little bit wayward, wasn't it?
Tivoli Gardens again trying to work their way through in the attacking third and this one is slipped through and uh, slipped out of their grasp and Williams will eat up a few more seconds Tivoli Gardens you really have to be careful because you're playing a team that knows how to manage time well this game would slow down to a crawl if Beer United can help it Already five and a half minutes have elapsed with little action and Tivoli Gardens not helping their cause if they give up possession like that. Easily handled. And Brown requires a little attention, not from off the bench though. Next goal is so crucial in this game, I think. And they always. No, but for this juncture, as we see more time being eaten, eaten up by the Veer players, so Jay Graham is being looked over by uh, Audit Hamilton, the referee. They have to be a little bit more careful with possession. So many times we see the likes of Clark and company just boot it long. He was under pressure this time. Nearly got himself in trouble, Nicholas Clark. But I think what they're trying to do in playing out of the back is a, is a better solution. They just have to be a little bit more deliberate and accurate, of course, with their passing. Getting back to the basics. Morris had strong for company and the clearance by Brown and Tivoli Gardens now again can't really permeate the rear back line and the flag is up for offside at any rate every time Veer United has the ball time drags A few Anik Garden supporters already here at the National Stadium East Field, of course, the junglists take on Harbourview next. What a big match that promises to be another tough challenge in the middle of the park. Another foul. Oh, 
See what the guys are doing enough at the back. Penny Cook. Ball over the top. The flag goes up for offside. Against Don Guilty Dunn. again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Williams with a spear out wide. Infringement on the play. Call against Anderson. I'm not sure why Tibet Gardens is rushing. It's almost as if fear have drawn them into an illusion that they probably have a, a few minutes left on the clock and they just decide to go long. And it hasn't worked out for them. They have a free kick now. Can they manufacture something here? Here they are again. Tivoli Gardens. Ball played inside at the back post, headed away. Dunn gives a return ball inside and... Yeah, that was that was pretty easy for uh, Anthony Thompson. Well, for Roger Williams, catching that one from Anthony Thompson. Ball inside the area, slipping and sliding, trying to get a touch on that one. Jason Dyer, who's who's pretty much had, has had a graveyard shift so far as he tries to get scraps out of this game. Penny Cook thinks it out wide. Lewis is there on his left foot, can deliver, three waiting. Was there a handled ball there? I don't think there was a lot in it. Referee has waved play on to, and play does continue. Not sure how he did that. Done, but he did it. Morris on his left foot. Plays this one inside. Morris is actually waiting on that one inside the area. The veer play is still down. And some attention will be given to him now. That's Dustin Cohen. Yeah, Odette, Odette Hamilton said right away that ball. So it was a hard tackle, but she thought the ball was won by Penny Cook. And it wasn't. Mm, maybe not. Let's Did he miss here. the ball completely? Yes. yes that was a foul, <laughs> actually, on Cohen. Did miss the ball. When, when a youngster stays down, at times, more often than not, he felt something. And he was down for a long time. Penny Cook was late. Tivoli Gardens have their substitutes up. Keena Simpson. Among them. Not sure the form that Keena Simpson is in, but based on what we have seen from him in the past, certainly a talent that can be utilized by Tivoli Gardens. There is Keena Simpson. Usually operates in the wide spaces. In Here's an opportunity for Tivoli here. Oh, he's free. Done. Oh, what an incredible block that is. And Don putting in the challenge there. It was Delane Clark who had got back to help out. 
Thomas wins it back. Trying to place that one through Thomas, and he did. And uh, the whistle goes, another free kick to Tivoli. Opportunity for Don. Don with the strike was on target. What a block from Delaine Clark. Get him back there. To remember, even though he played forward for Central, he also could operate as a centre back. Played that position for them the season before. Yes, so, indeed. Not a player that is unused to defensive responsibility. And that was an important block. Done. This could be awkward. Turned out not to be. Tivoli Gardens edge in possession, 51%. Thompson, sloppy from Tivoli Gardens. Yeah, not the best pass from Anthony Thompson. Another one of those players from the 2014 Charlie Smith generation. I think Tivoli Gardens are set to make a triple substitution here. No they, have to shake, they have to shake things up. Yeah. Obviously, the Jerome Waite team taught didn't quite work. Or hasn't borne any fruit yet. Done. Williams again goes long. Brown. Williams patrolling his area well. So here are the changes. Nelson out. Dwight McKenzie replaces him. Anthony Thompson is out. 
and Nottingham Thompson. He's replaced by number 29, Kino Simpson. Kino Simpson comes on. Third substitution, number 19, Kimarley Smith. He's replaced by number 24, Shaquille Jones. There's Simpson on for Thompson. And the Smith comes out to be replaced by Jones. Shaquille Jones, who did score in the first game against Waterhouse at the National Stadium. Veer inside the area at the back post. Ran out of real estate there. Very United, they have a, a throw in on this near side. Frustration seeping into the Tivoli Gardens camp. much from Brown. Look at that left arm in the face of Dyer. Brown has to be careful. Why, 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 why? He's on a yellow. He is on a yellow card. He's too aggressive at times, Brown. He's a little bit more finesse, finesse sometimes. There's a free kick coming in and Tivoli Gardens handling the situation so far. Phillips with the throw. They keep wasting the possession, and that's the cry from the Tivoli Gardens bench. And it's from their goalkeeper coach, Edsel Scott. So obviously, not happy with the work of, of, of Nicholas Clark there, that he's rushed the kick and giving it away. It's Robbie Scott. Thomas playing that one through the middle and it went by Morris. But to the Gardens, they have another chance here. You have to give Vere United credit. <laughs> they are buying all the free kicks. They are going down under both heavy and light touches. Javier Brown now. The dramatic oh didn't wasn't get, that dramatic he, he got yeah, a proper slap didn't get a hand in the face but you just see that peak up there to the referee as well remember in the second game at half time there will be uh he didn't get a hand in his face with a donation from as to whether they needed all the rolling around i'm not sure ten thousand dollars each 
you can get your rugby tickets at the entry gate, just $100, gives you a chance to win $10,000. Two big prizes donated by Cooper's West Management, half time in the second day. Ball played to the edge of the box. Hopeful ball inside, and it's knotted. <laughs> it's knotted back. And Clark had to be alert there. I don't get it. I, I, I reckon that's the best that they can achieve. A bit of chaos at the back panicked clearance there's still a lot of time in this game over 20 minutes nathan thomas again he's done well to find a few passes you know thomas but well, it's meant to be the guns here in the attacking third that they just run out of patience let's see what they can do with this Lewis again behind it. They've committed six, make that seven players on the edge of the box. Lewis delivers in an era of uncertainty. Did Lewis touch it last? I think they're trying to work it out with each other. And Lewis actually didn't touch it before it crossed the line. So it's a throw into Tivoli. A player though, down. that strong inside the area here's a deliver from Lewis hmm. I was making a point to Dwight Jeremiah yesterday about there are certain teams that when they play a contest they bring about exciting football whether it's against them or it's for them Lime Hall would have been one of those teams where whenever they play there's exciting football to be had even though they're conceding more often than not and they are struggling well, it's probably hard to say it's yeah. struggling after a draw and a loss yeah but they invite that type of game on the other hand very united they are a bit more stubborn hard to score against although in this case i would not say hard for them to score they have scored two goals here we That's haven't seen shot. that in a while and uh, here they are making a change but it's that kind of dour game that comes whenever veer is on the field yeah goal scorer of the second goal so jay graham he's replaced by player number 15. so shaquille notice comes on for graham lewis Again, the dink inside the box, and Roger Williams is always going to control the area. Everything just falling in favor of very united there's a change notice had come on for one of the goal scorers in graham kemoy phillips with a throw Last time Vera would have scored two goals, came on the 10th of April. <laughs> yes. Yeah, where they defeated Chapleton, Chapleton Maroons by four goals to nil. One of just three wins they had last season, Vera United. So this, a rare commodity. Morris. By the way, Shaquille Notice, who just came on, was one of the goal scorers in that four. No, 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 I'm too 
Fair United have never beaten Tivoli in 13 attempts. It's been eight Tivoli wins and five draws. Simpson with a long throw inside the area and Veer with the clearance. Veer looking to break. Ball played through Dyer. Can he get there? No. Captain Price in the way. Offside. How did he manage to get into that outside position there, Dwight yeah. McKenzie? Yeah, we could see it from here. And no excuse for that because he could see the entire line. Yep. <laughs> Howard Morris is letting him have it, saying, look, there's no excuse for that. You're right along the line on the wide area. Look and see for yourself. It almost seems as if Beer United, they have the magical skill to draw teams into apathy because certainly this is not the Tivoli Gardens that we saw in the first half. Not the Tivoli Gardens we would have seen in the first game against Waterhouse. Yeah. Struggling now to create opportunities. Download the Sportsmax app today from the Google Play or the App Store. Keep in touch with all things happening in the Jamaica Premier League, the Ray Neville Jamaica Premier League, as well as schoolboy football competitions in Jamaica and Trinidad and Tobago. And of course, Champions League is on as well tomorrow. Not quite the deliver from Cohen, but I love his work on that right hand side, Dustin Cohen. Physically matching up well with the Tivoli players. First touch from Brown wasn't the best, was it? And there hasn't been a, a shot on target from either side in the second half. Needs a softer touch on that occasion. Yeah, it has Done. that quality, hasn't it? Shaquille Jones now. I don't think there's a lot in that. <laughs> you hear the spectators in the background. I think he came off the thigh onto the arm, hence mm -hmm. it wasn't called from a dead Hamilton. All to hands, as they would say. Flick over the top. Almost. Almost got through. They try again. A veer player is down. And he's going to get some attention. Kemoy Phillips there. Not sure exactly I can tell what's happening with him. The real response to the Premier League, which is to thank to the Professional Football Jamaica Limited. Looks as if he's just seized up. Sponsors, proven sportsman, Bosco Oaks, Captain, Conservant, Mount Pleasant Academy, Just Bet, Burst Auto Parts, Connex. This is the sports match that moment. Seemed as if it was eons ago when Dustin Cohen was inside the area and converted or Sujay Graham.
It was the second goal, in fact, from Graham. And that's the sports max at moment of the game. Yeah, that was a big goal, wasn't it? Suje Graham, first of the season for their number 23. Just can't understand how he found that space between the post and Nicholas Clark, but he did. And yeah, what a moment it was for him as well. And very United, as I said, sometimes since they've scored two goals in a game. And yeah, struggled. At the start of last, I mean, it was a struggle all season. Amazing that they stayed up there with the limited resources they had. But as you said, just three wins out of 26. Ball played through the keeper's office line with Jay Williams. And it, 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 <laughs> it went out for a throw in. It was a curler, wasn't it? It was. <laughs> He's had a solid game, Williams talks a lot in the back line and good communicator for his defense yeah, that was unnecessary the foul Dennis was trying to help out his team there at the back and uh, now they have a free kick to the guns they probably could do it Radiko Wellington who is warming up on the side he's very good from the dead ball situations Radiko Wellington time ticking away here mm. Less than 10 minutes to go. Lewis to deliver. All along the ground, inside the area, the turn and the shot, and done. Puts that one wide. Was there a deflection? There was. It's a corner kick. And Williams, of course, is going to need a little bit more attention. <laughs> He's good at that, Williams. Working the clock. Good ball into the area. Spin and shot coming in. That one wasn't the best from Dunn. Not the best connection. Two goals last season for Justin Dunn. One so far this season. And boy, don't they need more. So, as us take a look at the, the goals in the game. That was a, a mistake there by Nicholas Clark. And uh, Cohen mopping up the spill in the end. They got the equalizer to their captain, to the Gardens, Barrington Price from the penalty spot. And then the go ahead goal, or sports match at moment of the game, Sujay Graham finding the little gap between the goalkeeper and the near post as we are back to live action. Headed across the area and Penny Cook. Trying to get a stab at it, couldn't keep it down, or couldn't put it on target. Veer. Can they get the knockout punch here? Here's the shot that's driven, and Clark holds on at the second attempt. Too much time not to pick a corner there for Veer. Two really good bites at the cherry. And straight down Nicholas Clark's throat. And it made it easy for him. What a chance for Veer to extend the lead as we see another yellow card for Lewis on this occasion. Lewis hasn't had a bad game at all. But unfortunately for him, it's not good enough up to this point. Anderson on the ground, he's had a really good game, Jalen yeah, Anderson. Has. Hasn't been called been called upon as much in the second half, but solid in the back line. So Lewis getting a, a yellow card. The former Veer player frustrated now this evening. Oh. 
headed away by Price. I wonder how many minutes will be added for stoppages. Bolting to over the top. Tivoli Gardens with the possession. One to aim for. And that's put over the bar. Oh, well, it's put behind. And there was a captain there collecting it in front of Roger Williams, who was telling him that he had it covered. But Brown was never going to take that chance. Lewis again trying to provide corner kick number five for Tivoli. Again at the near post, Price is there, back to, to Lewis. Dinks it inside, Williams, oh, that's wonderful goalkeeping. <laughs> and he won't get up so quickly this time. It's in a hand of appreciation from Anderson. Part of that under 20 squad a year ago that was coached by Marcel Gale, Jaden Anderson. The centre back in that team. Oh, well, here's an opportunity for Veer. It comes across. This is another opportunity. He goes down. They are appealing for a penalty, and it's a goal kick. It will be interesting to see that again on the replay. Dyer. Hmm. Nah. What do you mean by no, Cristela? No. What do you mean by no? I don't think he did anything to that. <laughs> I don't think that that didn't even really appeal. <laughs> I don't think Clark came, raised a leg or anything. Don't think he took out Dyer either. And Dyer's touch was 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 quite weak to say the least. I agree with that, Hamilton. Not much in that. Rodica Hamilton is now on the on the park. Wellington. Rodica Wellington. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what can he do in four minutes plus stoppages joint leading goal scorer last season leading goal scorer the year before Wellington has promised much over the years needs to produce today Get a card flashed in the direction of Shaquille Notice. Two to be players down. So as we welcome Coach Coach coming out to home for his second game. Coach is half of you to our left and man in gardens to our right as they get ready. She took out two players. Can an argument be made about being shown two yellow cards? Free kick to Tivoli Gardens. Can something be made with this opportunity here? Lewis. Well, he bangs that one wide. Wasted attempt. Janae is in the stands. Let's go to her. Janae, what's up? Donald, I am here with the one and only Shokubos. If you missed him last night at the Trey Songs concert, then you can see him here today at Stadium E. Shokubos are gone. Good day, Take him a team, I lose. But you just tell me to tell you your team. I'm a hypocrite sometimes, but I still my team. <laughs> All right. I need a dub from you for the JPL. Hear me, I man. From the city face of the voice of Shock Boss, I represent them as a JPL. And I play PL at the better league, bigger league, outside, Rusker. <laughs> well, you heard it from him first. Donald and Chris, let's wrap this up. That was not bad. I wonder how long you thought about that one. If he was prepared to do so. Ball played inside at the back post and uh, collecting that header from Dwight McKenzie. 
Michael J. Williams. Here they are, Veer, almost playing that one through. More and more patrons coming in. Ball played inside Wellington. Did he? Well, no, he was in an offside position, Wellington. Six minutes of stoppages to be played. That's a free attempt for Cohen, who could have wrapped up this game now. Placed it wide. That's a little bit surprising. Nice delivery towards the back post. Not the best defending from Simpson. And yeah, Cohen, based on the form he's in, would have expected to make a better connection. What an opportunity for the teenager. 3-1 would certainly have been good enough at this point for Fear United. Clark has been a little shaky, hasn't he? In yes. goal. Unusual for Nicholas Clark, one of the best goalkeepers we've seen at the schoolboy level in this generation. Or over the last 10 years, attended Heidel. But has that had some unfortunate situation since he's been at Tivoli? Was in and out of the starting lineup for some time as well. Well, here's Tivoli. Can they manufacture something here through Jones? Jones is bought inside, was trying to find Wellington. Cohen has worked so hard in this game as we go through the different candidates for player of the game. Brown has also been a rock where he stands in the holding midfield area, breaking up quite a few plays for Vier United, the captain. Yeah, third and fourth. Jaden Anderson has also had a decent game as well for Veer. For me, it's between Anderson or Williams. Anderson really good in the, in the in the first half. Hasn't been called upon as much in the second half, but his job has still been solid, and he's locked that side of the defense. Mackenzie on it, swings this one inside. Here he is rising again. But this man with the ball as well was the man of the match in their first game. And just so he's controlled the tempo of the game from his perspective. <laughs> you know, he's teased the opponents, but he's been very safe. Has had to make just maybe one or two saves, but how he's commanded his six yard area of deliveries from the corner flags and so on. His communication in the back line, I think between himself and Anderson, they have been the two best. Yes, Cohen's goal was a good one, but I think he's looking for the bronze, Cohen. I don't think Tivoli Gardens has done a lot to test Roger Williams. But I agree with you in terms of what other attributes he, he uh, has, especially in regards to him commanding his 18-yard yeah, box. Right, and he hasn't had to make a ton load of saves all over the place, but mm -hmm. there are a lot of deliveries that Tivoli have put into the area that he's plucked out of the air. He's commanded that 60-yard area. He's gotten in the thick of things. He's understood 
when to release early, when not to. He's asked for the ball and he's come out as a sweeper keeper and delivered passes. Those things are important jobs of a goalkeeper, especially in the modern game. Mackenzie. But I do. Simpson. Mm. Brown was in the way of that one, went down. I think Brown is just being really very smart here. <laughs> really very smart. And Tivoli attacking and a dead William. Yeah, no. No, it's a, in the, it's a side of the head. Yeah. And that's, that's going to be a little bit more painful, even though he would have expected it. But it is the, the side of the head, almost the side of the face. I guess Tivoli's argument is that that Tivoli was about to take a shot on the edge of the 18 yard area though and that wasn't a head-to-head -head collision was it but no it wasn't but that's not the only reason why the, the protocol for concussion would take place yeah. there are many other variables Chris Taylor it wasn't a shot that was blasted in his, to his head though <laughs> he did jump and head the ball so you have to take those things into consideration but yeah, really so are, we, are we giving it to Roger Williams or are we giving it to Jaden Anderson or are we giving it to the captain Jay, uh, Javier Brown for his head injury? <laughs> he has, he's been rock solid, Chris Taylor. <laughs> yeah, Brown is usually a good player, but I, I think it's between Anderson and, and Roger Williams. I, I do like the work that Jaden Anderson did throughout the first 45 minutes for sure. In 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 the second half, it's been Roger Williams who has commanded the show. In the, second, in the half. second half, so yeah, I would lean towards the goalkeeper then. Since you have convinced me to not go anywhere else, Brown on it, going to the byline, Brown, and uh, that's why he's a central defender as opposed to a winger. William sends this long. I think Chris Taylor has changed his mind again. No, it's not about a change of mind. <laughs> Are you sticking I, with I, Williams or not? Yeah. I'm sticking with I'm I'm going with Williams. You're going with Williams. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I think what we're realizing is that it could have been a tie. <laughs> Dyer. Cohen will go to the corner flag. And uh, that's the end of the game. What a result. A big, big result for Beer United. Cohen on the score sheet. The youngster, the 16 year old opening his account this season. So to Sir Jake Graham after Barrington Price had got the equalizer for Timothy Gardens. Yep, Graham with the go ahead goal. And uh, at the end of the day, Veer United walking away with all three points, all the marbles. It's a big away win in the Rare Neville Jamaica Premier League. And they may take a lot of confidence out of that result, which has ended in their favor by the odd goal in three. As we take a look at the, the highlights here at the National Stadium East Field. And uh, this was some good work inside the area. The challenge coming in though, a lot of slipping and sliding and then the resulting effort, not a lot of power behind it. And then Veer coming forward, ball played inside the spill, Nicholas Clark and then mopped up there by 
Dustin Cohen in the fourth minute. Dyer did well there. And how did Clark manage to spill that? I'm not sure. But then he came across the coin and oh, he finished that with a plum there. As if he had a lot of experience, a 16 year old. And here he is out wide, heading to the byline, doing really well. Send that one inside on a platter. And then the resulting effort over the top. Dennis there with the, the miss, Ricardo Dennis. And then clumsy challenge inside the box. Two of the guns were awarded the penalty. And Barrington Price making no mistake. One-one. Price delivering this one. Well, Price was the one who was on the end of that cross from Lewis. And Price just about missing. And then that free kick was wide of the mark from Howard Morris, who did okay in this game. And then the finish to Jay Graham in the 28th minute. Finding the gap between the goalkeeper and the near post. And what a finish that was too. Opening his account this season. And then Lewis is delivering side and Price coming on the end of it. Striking the woodwork as well. Then the second half, Penny Cook had a stab at that one. Went over the bar. Or went wide of the mark, I should say. And then this one was drilled in. And Clark, another nervous moment, but he held on. And then Cohen probably would have sealed the man of match performance he, if he had put that one away. But he missed it. That was all she wrote. As we take a look at the full time statistics, Tibet Guns with just three on target. So, two very united. It was that kind of game that just meandered along physical game to 29 fouls in it and the three other cards shown to the, to the gardens very united with just one and uh, the possession in favor of two the gardens in the end at 55 percent Roger two man of the match performances in a row tell me what this wins means to yourself and for your united well this wins means a lot to via united because we have sees we have one week and we get back in training so we work very hard. The coach Jilwe him put me to work so we'd have to come out and give um, Clarendon this win. Talk to me about your performance as well, the communication from the back. We could hear you all the way from the sidelines and you managing the time and the clock so very well. How important is that for a goalkeeper? Well that's all in the game. As a goalkeeper you have to know to manage time when pick your moments and make sure you lead the team from the back to front to get the victory. Not a clean sheet today, and you weren't busiest in terms of diving and so on, but in terms of you playing as a sweeper-keeper, is that a new role that you've employed in your game? No, it's all in my game, because I can use my ball feet, so I always use my foot feet to um, help me in my game. All right, Roger, all the best for the weeks to come. Enjoy your Man of the Match award yet again. Thank you. Roger Williams, your play of the game. Another top performance from the Veer United goalkeeper. And Jerome Ruiz will be joining me right about now. Jerome, uh, not necessarily the performance you would have seen from, from your men in the first game, not so fluent going forward, did have opportunities, but you didn't make the most of them. Ah, well, the game is about scoring goals. The first half, we created roughly about five, five clear chances. And if we have put even two of those away, it would be a different ball game. I know generally you're very proud of your 3-4-3, three, three, but do you think in this situation, for example, you are hurt from the wide areas, no coverage necessarily from the flank midfielders. Well, uh, you might classify it as, as flank midfielders. These are players that nowadays you call it inverted, you know, wing backs. But what defeated us today, or self defeated us. And it's not like the opponent did well. I mean, errors in front of goal, as you can see, it was televised. and. The amount of chances we created, we should have won this game. You wrong the changes as well, uh, bringing in players in different positions. Um, how satisfied were you with that and the depth of the bench? Uh, I, I still need more from the players. 
and they have to understand that this is the top flight in Jamaica and if you're going to be given an opportunity you, you have to prove yourself that you want to play Jeremy, you're doing things away from the sideline. This is not the custom for most coaches. Um, but you said you wanted a better vantage point. How did that work for you in terms of your well, communication well, with the well, unit? Um, away from the stats that I'm doing, you know, assessing the team from, from a different perspective, it, you know, you can see a, a much better game. That's, you know, in the halftime break, you can analyze and, and explain a little bit more. And if you notice, it was the opponent that was chasing right throughout the second half. Yeah, that was certainly a very obvious thing. Well, we look forward to seeing your continued growth here at Tivoli Gardens and all the best in the weeks to come. All right, thanks. Jerome Waite, their head coach at Tivoli Gardens, coming out on the losing side of things this week and beaten by Linford Rudy Dixon and very united. Jermaine Douglas now comes into frame, the assistant coach. Jermaine must be really... It was a tough start to the season, as we spoke about last season for very united, but to get a win in just your second game, to go with a draw, you must be happy about that. Well, it's a start we would have wished for at the beginning of the season. The first game I thought we could have won. Never had enough in the final third to get a victory that day. Today, we were efficient in front of goal and we defended totally when we needed to. The efficiency must be a big deal. We, we, we checked the stats and it was April the last time where United scored two goals in a match. So the fact that you got there, maintained it and still created chances must be very pleasing. Yes, it is. And when you are putting in work on the training pitch and you see it coming out in the games, it's a joy for any coach. And tonight, like I said, we were on the back foot, especially in the second half, but we defended stoutly, and I'm really happy for the victory. Talk to me about your goalkeeper, Roger Williams, as well. Two man of the match performances in a row. Um, how big is he in the back line? Communicates seem seemingly very well as well. He's excellent, and from last year, he was doing good. But mentally, sat him down, spoke to him. I think he's really focused this year, and you will see him getting even better as the season progresses. Some youngsters coming into your starting lineup, adding the potency up front, that must be good as well with the experienced players to see the youth coming through, Cohen, uh, Clark and company. That was the objective at the beginning of the season. Get fresh blood in. Players who are willing to work, who are willing to run and to sacrifice for the team. And tonight, a few of them started and they did themselves proud. Well, fresh, fresh blood, you say. You have a fresh win as well. Enjoy your three points and we look forward to seeing you next week. Oh, definitely. Next one. So Veer with the 2-1 win over Tivoli Gardens. It's a big win for Veer. Uh, this Clarendon team, they have struggled in the past, but today they were efficient and they were strong and solid in defense and got the better of a Tivoli Gardens team who were impressed on match week one, but couldn't quite fire in their second game against the Clarendon-based team.